नमस्कार एंड वेलकम टू स्टडी आई टी आई एम योर फ्रेंड राहुल एजेंडा फॉर टूडेज डिस्कशन इज कनेक्टेड विद जेनेटिकली मॉडिफाइड क्रॉप वेयर वी आर गोइंग टू स्पेसिफिकली डिस्कस अबाउट जी एम मस्टर्ड और डी एम एच लेवन दहारा मस्टर्ड हाइब्रिड लेवन इन रिसेंट न्यूज इट हैज बीन हाईलाइटेड दैट द जेनेटिकली मॉडिफाइड मस्टर्ड द इंडियन वेरियंट हैज फेल टू मीट मिनिमम वेट नॉर्म फॉर कमर्शियल रिलीज एज सीड वी आर गोइंग टू अंडरस्टैंड दिस न्यूज कॉम्प्रीहेंसिवली इन फैक्ट this is going to be a deciding week for genetically modified mustard in india because on october 10th the supreme court is going to listen to many petitions which have been filed against the environmental release or testing of this gm mustard so let's try to understand this issue in totality along with understanding what is genetically modified mustard as well all right let's begin but before that study iqs p2i program batch 1 is being released or is starting from 10th october 2023 now this will be available in three formats we have it in english hindi and in a bilingual format and for your convenience they are available in three different subscriptions there is silver gold platinum and you have validity as per your convenience whichever validity suits you can go for it the question is why you should select p2i program because this is the most comprehensive program for upsc civil services preparation entire syllabus coverage would be done after every module there is mcq practice after every module there is answer writing practice there is one to one mentorship group mentorship whole shebang everything is available in this particular program it's beginning on october 10th just visit our website studyiq.com you'll get all the details to join before the deadline i'll see you in the class all right let's begin our discussion as i told you today's interaction is about gm crops or genetically modified crops first thing what are genetically modified crops these are crops in which some sort of artificial gene is inserted from other species if a gene is inserted that means it is going to give some specific trait to the modified crop what would be that trait the trait which will lead to higher yield it can be some sort of resistance against a herbicide some resistance against say pests or some resistance with respect to say climate basically it leads to better productivity now in indian scenario when we look at genetically modified crops till now in totality only one crop has got complete authorization or complete approval in 2002 itself the bt cotton bacillus thuringiensis cotton was approved in india it was given a go ahead and this bt cotton it gives resistance against pink bollworm and by giving resistance against a pest the yield of cotton would be higher now since 2016 it has been commercially released and by now more than 90% of the cotton that comes from india it is bt cotton itself now apart from bt cotton the approvals have been or had been given before first to bt brinjal later on it was taken back or it was rejected and in recent times the genetically modified mustard it has been approved once in 2017 but after a lot of hue and cry and protest the approval was again taken back but last year in october 2022 the genetic engineering appraisal committee which is the final approving authority this committee it comes under the ministry of environment forest and climate change it gave approval in principle in 2022 to genetically modified mustard now this this is the news genetic engineering appraisal committee approves commercial cultivation of genetically modified mustard yet again second time first in 2017 later on in 2022 but here it all came with some riders that means in the last rabi season and you need to understand from mcq perspective when i say mustard when i say mustard now mustard is a rabi crop and you do understand we are now in october that means the rabi season is already upon us so last year during the rabi season some field trials were conducted for genetically modified mustard in six different states at the indian council for agricultural research sites and this year another testing is bound to happen but the supreme court has now put a small rider or it it has put objections with respect to this year's rabi testing as well so let's look at what exactly is happening but before that let's try to understand this genetically modified mustard the name is dmh11 dhara mustard hybrid 11 it is a 11th variant it's a hybrid variant and that hybrid variant has certain genes which have been incorporated from 
other species. Who developed it? It was developed indigenously in India, a team led by Dr. Deepak Pentel at the Center for Genetic Manipulation of Crop Plants in Delhi University. They developed the DMH11 variant. Now, you must be thinking, sir, why did they go for genetic modification or genetic modification? Can we, can we simply create different hybrids? Even hybrids can also give you a lot of benefit. But there is a catch here. There is a catch especially with mustard. The problem with mustard is that it is a perfect flower. It's a perfect flower. That means the androsium, gynosium, the male and female parts would be there inside the flower itself and it would pollinate very, very quickly. That means no sort of cross pollination can occur or no sort of hybridization can occur. It becomes very tough for hybridization here. So to resolve this particular issue, what the team led by Dr. Deepak Pentel, they did was, they took two variants. One is the Indian variant. One is the Indian variant. They took another variant, East European variant. And what they did was, they crossed these two. Now, you do know for crossing it, one of the male or female parts of either has to be suppressed. So, what they did was, for suppression, new genes were incorporated from a soil bacterium called as Bacillus amylolycophaceans three genes were incorporated. Now, in the, in the Indian variant, the male part, the male part or the anthers, they were turned sterile. That means the Indian variant Varuna, it will have male part of the flower. It will be sterile. Only female part would be active. And the East European variant, to, to enhance its fertility, a gene bar star was added. That means the pollen grain from the East European variant, it can it can pollinate and later fertilize the Indian Varuna variant. And when these two are crossed, you will get the DMH11 hybrid. It's a fertile hybrid. And the, the question here is, we need to ensure that these seeds can be used again by the farmers. That's why the male fertility of the East European variant, it has been enhanced. Apart from this, there is another third gene which has been added from Bacillus amylolycophaceans, that is the bar gene. Now, this bar gene, it provides resistance against one particular herbicide. Now, this herbicide is phosphinothricin. Now, phosphinothricin is also known as glu glucosinate. It's also called as glucosinate. Now, it goes by a commercial name of Basta. So, basically, what we have done, what we have done is we have created a hybrid out of genetically modified parents and this hybrid has three special genes now. What would be the benefit of this? You must be thinking, sir, why so much of research, so much of so many things have been done? Because the entire debate is about this, sir, because we need to find some benefits, isn't it? And the team at Center for Genetic Manipulation of Crop Plants, they studied the, the yield of this DMH11 hybrid and they saw with when compared to other checks or other, other variants, the yield was about 30% higher and you do know that India imports oil and if we are able to increase the yield of mustard, we can lower our oil imports. Apart from that, it is herbicide resistant to phosphinothricin. That means, that means I would not need any sort of manual weeding. What I do is I simply apply this herbicide. Now, this herbicide is going to kill all the, all the weeds, but it is not going to do anything to the GM mustard. That means I would not need any manual weeding. I will save my money. Income of the farmers will increase. So, so many benefits are there. So, manual effort of weeding, herbicide efficiency, etc. are some of the positives. But on the other side, on the other side, there are many issues which have been highlighted. We'll talk about this at length. But some of the issues that we can talk about right now is what is going to be the impact on bees? You do know that honeybees are the main pollinators and the genetically modified mustard, will they attract these bees or what is going to be a long term impact on bees? We do not know. How it is going to impact the environment in general? We do not know. What is going to happen with the wild population? That is also one of the questions. And since it is resistant to only one particular herbicide, which goes by this name Basta, will there be monopoly of one particular company or will there be monopoly of these uh, these chemical industries with respect to this herbicide. Apart from that, 
some questions can be raised especially with respect to manual labor now we are saying that it is it is efficient in terms of say reduced amount of weeding that is needed so manual labor or employment in agriculture would reduce apart from that the the chemical itself that is phosphonothricin or the uh, glucosinate is it a carcinogen although initial studies on rodents and other other species it has proved that they are they might not be carcinogenic but we do not know what is going to be the long term impact that is the biggest concern apart from that today since there is a selective herbicide which is working on on this particular crop so the crop is non resistant but imagine tomorrow another weed comes up on which on which this does not act so that is nothing but a super weed so these are some of the concerns and we have got we have got people on both the sides for instance the scientists the scientists the government etc they want to promote more and more of genetically modified crops but there are many environmental experts environment based organizations and the and the i would say uh, local indian associations who are against this genetically modified mustard because of the long term concerns especially because of the hybridization with the east european variant as well so there are supporters on one side and there are naysayers on the other side and among the supporters is the government now government has been batting for it for a very long time the government has said that that the genetic engineering appraisal committee which has which had approved the trials in october 2022 they were taken and the studies would be carried out now i told you the approval was given last year along with it the genetic engineering appraisal committee it had also suggested that study on impact on bees have to be conducted all right now what happened was the people who developed this they gave data regarding other testing which has happened now during the approval the geac was provided by the developers the data from canada from usa from australia regarding the genetically modified rape seed not not uh, the mustard but rape seed now you do understand there is a slight difference because both of them they belong to one particular family that is brassica family itself and based on this data the gac was asked approval and the gac had suggested that the commercial release is only going to follow once there are no red flag how is this gm mustard going to impact on honeybees and other pollinators it must be studied and right now studies are going on now apart from this the government has highlighted that the dmh11 its yield testing was done in different field trials not exactly in 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 the in the uh, in the uh, environmental scenario in basic field trials itself under the icar it was done in 2010 11 11 12 and 2014 15 and it was compared with other varieties the indian varuna variant it was also checked with other zonal checks now check basically is a variety and any new variety it has to beat this check to to become commercially viable because if i have a seed which gives me say 10 quintals per acre then if i create a seed which gives me 5 quintal per acre that is of no use right for me the check is that 10 quintals per acre so a new seed coming up it has to break this barrier and the studies that were conducted it showed that dmh11 was about 28% higher in yield compared to the indian varuna variant and it was about 37% higher than the other zonal checks all right apart from that right now in india we have varuna variant we have some zonal checks we also have some hybrids which have come in the market hybrids like giriraj pioneer rh725 etc which are right now in the market now these are not genetically modified these are not genetically modified okay so we have varuna we have some zonal checks we have some hybrids which are provided by different seed companies and the output here output here for the hybrids in recent years has been observed somewhere around 20 to 26 quintals per hectare now why i am highlighting this because we will talk about last one year's data about about the dmh11 as well all right now what has happened in recent time i told you last year last year it was it was allowed for environmental release that means at six different locations in different states under indian council of agricultural research itself the gm mustard is being tested 
and this year the government asked for permission to conduct the trials this Ravi season as well. Now, Supreme Court has rejected the center's plea to go ahead. Why? Because there have been multiple petitions which have been filed against the genetically modified mustard with the apex court. By whom? By the naysayers. Now, who are these naysayers who are concerned about environment, who are environmental activists? There is a coalition against the genetic mod, genetically modified crops in India. There is the a Hindu Jagran Manch, there are different organizations who have been saying or batting against the genetically modified crops. Now, what are their arguments? In fact, in fact, the coalition against genetically modified crops, it has highlighted that last year itself, the government, it tricked the judiciary. What is the argument here in the petitions is that the government last year, it already, that means ICR, it already sent the genetically modified crops on October 22nd, 2022 at six different locations to the to the necessary stakeholders even before the judicial even before the judicial approval that means the matter is already fate a comply what the, without the judicial approval the the government had already sent the seeds beforehand itself and this year also same thing might happen and that is why the petition has been filed and supreme court has put the matter on hold as of now that means Last year's trials have happened. For this year's trial, let us wait and watch what Supreme Court will tell. Apart from this, the, the coalition against genetically modified crops, they allege that there is a danger of illegal use always. Why? Because the kind of situation that has been created where it is highlighted that, that every farmer can save a lot of money connected with weeding by using genetically modified crops and by spraying the basta. All right. So what happens is farmers would be would be very happy or farmers would be incentivized. They would be thinking currently that if it is a herbicide tolerant variety, then I don't need to pay anything for the laborers. And you already know that in agriculture, I would say there is some sort of a labor shortage, labor costs have gone high. So farmers might resort to illegal use. Right now, it is not available for commercial application. All right. Yes. And control testing is still going on. but there can be a danger of illegal use and these people highlight same thing happened with cotton seeds in 2002 as well there was rampant illegal use even before complete approval that is why we need to stop apart from this the impact on bee industry is still unknown this organization highlights that india right now exports honey and many of the honey farms or the apiculture farms they are they are located nearby the mustard farms because honey industry and mustard farms have a lot of connectivity. Now, in such a scenario, if we bring genetically modified mustard and if there are traces of this genetically modified uh, chemical or etc. in the honey that we are exporting, then the export would be rejected and the exports lot can have some adverse financial impact. All right. Now, apart from this, some other organizations, they highlight that once the genetically modified seeds are introduced in the market, the other seeds will completely disappear. Now, this happened with cotton seeds. They say that the Swadeshi Jagran Munch, they highlight, not the Hindu Jagran Munch, Swadeshi Jagran Munch, pardon me. Uh, after introduction of the BT cotton, they highlighted that all the other indigenous seeds, they have vanished from the market. And same thing will happen with mustard as well. Apart from that, they also highlight that there is a question with the productivity. Right now, they say, Productivity is around 28% higher than Indian Varuna variant. But some other hybrids that are in the market, they give almost similar kind of output. Now, they say that right now you are saying productivity is high. But what we have observed with cotton, BT cotton, is that the productivity has been continuously going down. And in terms of quantity, yes, we are producing a lot of cotton. Why? Because the amount of area where the cultivation of BT cotton has gone, that has increased for sure. But the productivity has been dropping steadily for BT cotton. Apart from that, wherever BT cotton has gone, there has or that has led to monoculture, only cultivation of BT cotton. Now, this is not environmentally sustainable. Apart from that, as I told you, there is also a danger of the phosphonutricin. 
turning out to be a carcinogen right now there are no reports like that but in some countries there have been research which has which has a uh, seen or which has shown that it might have carcinogenic impacts right although the initial studies which were submitted to gse it showed that on rats there was no impact etc but in long run we do not know still these issues are also highlighted now to add to all this problem recently another report has come this is the domain of our news that the genetically modified mustard or dmh11 it has failed to meet minimum weight for commercialization of seed so what happened from last year now last year rabi dmh11 was tested at six different locations in fact at eight locations in six different states under the indian council of agriculture research itself and it was observed it was observed that the yield is about 26 quintals per hectare and you saw that with some other hybrid varieties we are getting somewhere around 20 or 22 to 26 quintals per hectare in comparison to varuna and other regional checks this is higher along with it the oil content is about 40 percent which is quite decent but but the weight the weight of seeds per thousand seeds it is only 3.5 grams and the norm or the standard for commercial seeds is every thousand seeds they must have minimum weight of 4.5 gram and right now right now the dmh11 has not satisfied this so question comes up can it be rejected we do not know we have to wait because what the experts have suggested agriculture experts they have highlighted that the some some say that it does not have any impact right while one section says that weight is not very relevant issue because weight depends on moisture weight depends on many other things in general what these experts suggest is 300 to 300 to 400 seeds 300 to 400 seeds per gram is decent enough so if you look at this particular number we'll see 1000 seeds 3.5 that means uh, 9 yes approximately i would say a little uh, a little uh, less than 300 300 grams so this this number would be close to that so what what people say one section who say weight does not matter too much because it depends on many other factors and somewhere in the range of 300 to 400 seeds per gram is very decent but some other section suggests that if the weight is low then it might impact the yield in future as well especially looking at the kind of harvesting that we are moving towards you know you do know that the agricultural labor is already in short so we are slowly and steadily moving from manual harvesting to mechanical harvesters there is mechanization and this mechanization principle of harvesting it basically has different different principles gravity is one of the principle as well and because of that there might be there might be more yield losses for the farmer which might be concerning going forward and all this data all this data has been provided to the genetic engineering appraisal committee this data has also been provided to the attorney general of india who will be who will be now who will be now defending the government side and a final hearing a final hearing is going to occur uh, somewhere around october 10th that means in a few days the supreme court is going to listen arguments from both the sides because the rabi season is already upon us and the judgment might come very very soon whenever the judgment comes we will discuss that but from one side the naysayers the environmental activists the swadeshi jagran manch etc they are batting against the genetically modified crops genetically modified mustard and on the other side there is the government which wants to go on testing this let's see what happens exactly but i hope through this discussion you have understood where do we stand as of now because this is a very likely topic for examination genetically modified crops the issue connected with genetically modified mustard all this has been in news and there is a very high potential that questions might be framed on this topic so we'll keep an eye on this we'll keep an eye on the data as well whenever the supreme court judgment comes we'll have a discussion again on the diq you also keep your eyes and ears open for this that is it in this particular discussion thank you for watching the video jai hind